And the reason why it is here in the center of our holy church is because in the Catholic Church, the fourth Sunday of Easter is dedicated to the, wor to the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. The World Day of Prayer for Vocations. And this icon, and in today's bulletin you have a description of this icon, is called, I have chosen you. I have chosen you. World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Vocations to the priesthood. Vocations to the diaconate. Vocations to religious life for men and women, which is consecrated life, monastic life. And for our Archeparchy of Pittsburgh, you and I know that together, strongly, we must pray for vocations. And that is the theme for this Sunday, vocations. But how can we bring these two topics together? You heard the Gospel reading from St. John the Evangelist, in which our Lord heals the man who has been suffering for 38 years. He has been paralyzed, laying on that mat at the sheep pool, Bethesda, in Jerusalem. Now how can we join these two topics together, the healing of that man in Jerusalem and the topic of vocations? In order to do so, I invite you to join me on this meditation as we focus on the place, the location where the healing of the paralyzed man took place. It took place in Jerusalem. It took place at the pool called Bethesda. Now the word itself, Bethesda, means house of mercy. And this is where that connection comes place. Bethesda, house of mercy. My friends, look around you in our holy church. Look around you, because this church, this is our Bethesda. This is our house of mercy dedicated to St. Gregory. If you were listening carefully, in the beginning of today's Gospel reading, in describing that place, Bethesda, it says, and I quote from chapter 5, Verses 2 to 3. Now there was in Jerusalem a pool which is called Bethesda, having five porches. And then we go to verse 3. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, <coughs> lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Why were they waiting for the moving of the water? According to some biblical scholars, the angel of God would come down, God's messenger, and he would touch the waters and they would bubble. And the first one to come in into that pool was healed. That's why all those people who were sick, blind, lame, paralyzed, were gathered around that house of mercy. Once again, look around you in our Bethesda. Look around you in our families. Look around you in our communities nowadays. When we come together in our, in our house of mercy, we are not here because we are perfect. There's only one who is perfect, and that is God. We are here in our Bethesda because of mercy. 
Look around you on this Sunday. Maybe to your eye or my eye, we do not see people who are visibly suffering. But what we do not see, even in our house of mercy, is the inner suffering. The inner suffering that you or I might have. A brother or a sister who is in our midst or amongst your relatives or friends. A brother or a sister who is blind, going back to the gospel reading. Blind, maybe not physically, but maybe blind spiritually when it comes to forgiveness or reconciliation. I mentioned the word lame, disabled, people who are suffering in Jerusalem. When it comes to lame or disabled in our lives, maybe there is a brother or sister who is lame or disabled, whether it comes to a relationship, whether it comes to a family, disabled relationships that we see nowadays in marriages, in families, maybe at your workplace, or a lame, disabled relationship at school with your friends. When we talk about paralyzed, as we heard in today's Gospel reading, that inner suffering of being paralyzed, maybe not physically, but spiritually, paralyzed by sin, whether it's a bad addiction, Paralyzed by gossip, paralyzed by using bad words, and I can continue on. Yes, we need, I need, you need, we need to be in our Bethesda, this house of mercy, in order to seek that mercy from God. Mercy that brings healing as we witness in today's Gospel reading. And here I'm going to stop, because this is where the vocation comes in. In particular, the vocation to the priesthood. I have chosen you. The vocation to the priesthood. Because in this particular Bethesda on Mohawk Road, I am here to help you. I am here to help you with all my personal weaknesses so that we can share this journey of faith together. I am here to guide you and you to guide me. To be together in obtaining mercy, this healing in our lives. You might ask, how does the priesthood do that? And the answer to that question is through ministry. The word ministerium in Latin, to serve through ministry. And that is the ministry of prayer. That is the ministry through the administration of the sacraments. But the ministry of a priest is to widen the church beyond its material boundaries. The ministry of the priest is not only to happen within these walls. The ministry of a priest in every parish is to happen here and to continue out there in this world. To take it to the people's homes. To take it into people's hearts, souls. There was a Russian bishop that I admired, Archbishop Yohan John Shahovskoy, and he wrote the following. Listen carefully. Just as bees gathering honey from the flowers of the field take it to their hives, so human souls, after true prayer, Take heavenly sweetness from the church to their homes 
and distribute it in the world. My friends, in this Bethesda, in Upper St. Clair, in this house of mercy, together, not only the priest, together, we try our best to produce that sweetness. As we saw in today's gospel reading, our Lord, he brought sweetness into that man's life. A life that was being lived in darkness, being paralyzed. A life without sweetness for 38 years. The ministry that happens here together is a ministry that brings sweetness not only into our lives, but also to the world, your friends, your relatives, those people out there in the streets of this city. So today, I ask you, on this Sunday of World Prayer for Vocations, I ask you to pray for vocations. A friend of mine who's a priest, together a couple of years ago, we went through the directory for the Arch Eparchy of Pittsburgh. And the middle age for this jurisdiction is 64. That's hard. I ask you to pray for vocations to fill our parishes, our monastery, with men and women that will bring sweetness that is the Word of God into our lives by their testimony, by their witness and example to the love of Christ. And I know that sometimes there are those who fail out there in the world. Even those who have been called. It happened throughout the history of our church. It happens in our lives today. And when you see that happen, I call upon you to offer a prayer. To offer a prayer for those who have failed. This reminds me of a story of a minister who parked his car in a no parking spot. <clears throat> And he left a note on the car saying, I am a minister. I have circled around the area ten times, and I could not find a parking space. I'm going to be late, and so I'm parking here. And then the minister wrote down, Please forgive our trespasses, <laughs> Reverend such and such. He signed the note. Well, the police officer came up, and he found the note. And he left a citation for his mistake of parking, but also the officer wrote a note to the minister. When the minister came back to his car, he found a note saying, I am a police officer. I go around this block for 10 years. And if I do not give you a ticket, I will lose my job. Reverend, please lead us not into temptation. <laughs> My friends, temptations are out there in this world. It happens to all of us. It happens to those who have a vocation. It happens to those amongst the lay people, the faithful. It happens. But today on this Sunday, I ask you to offer a prayer. Just like we witness a life being transfigured in that house of mercy of Bethesda, Christ continues to call men and women to bring that particular transfiguration into people's lives. A transfiguration that brings sweetness. A transfiguration that brings the Word of God, love, compassion into this world. And if you hear that call, come, follow me. Answer that call. It is a call from on high. If you know somebody who's hearing that call, encourage them. But today, let us offer a prayer for vocations. Amen. Christ is risen. Amen.